How many people think they're in the plan, but they're really not? <laughs> oh, happy days. Remember in the latter days it said that many will come in my name, that's Christians, but there will be wolves in sheep's clothing. We are advancing more and more into great deception and falling away. We're advancing more and more into the exposure of wickedness and righteousness. Amen? Amen. Would you turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Oh, yes. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, are you concerned? <laughs> are you concerned that you're ready? Amen. There better be a fear in us. You know, we should always think, what if the Lord shows up right now? Will I make it home? Is there anything I've done today that has caused me to miss? You know? Remember, we talked about maintaining the character of Christ. Remember, Jesus is always looking for Jesus. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you. By any means, for that day will not come unless the what? Falling. falling away has come first. And we've heard this multiple times, and there is a falling away. It's a tremendous falling away. And it's not just about falling away, not going to church. It's a falling away from doing the will of God. Amen? Where people are doing their own will, not his will. They're missing their calling. They're not fulfilling their purpose and destiny. So let no one deceive you by any means that that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself. Who opposes and exalts himself. These are two fruits that we will see. In individuals, and in the Antichrist, who poses and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know that what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, that he is us. Amen? It is called the body of Christ. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with his breath and destroy with his brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they, may, that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, 
brethren beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for sanctification or salvation through what? Sanctification. So I want you to grab hold of something. There's two things here. Salvation is connected to sanctification. That's where he said, come out from among them. Amen? Come out from a what? Come out from among them, he says, and be separate and don't touch what is unclean. Amen? And then I will what? Receive you. I will what? Receive you. I want you to grab hold of something because all of this is speaking about the coming rapture. This is, what, this is what everything's talking about right now. See, the enemy is trying to prevent us from getting into position to be removed. Because his desire is great wrath against individuals, especially against the body of Christ. Does everybody understand that? So he says deception will be the cause of the falling away. Deception will be the cause of the falling away. And the falling away will be caused because of the discard of the Word of God and the Bible. And the discard, disregard, excuse me. So it will be the disregard to the Bible, His Word, and disregard to His law of eternal life, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. There'll be a disregard to these things. Again, the deception will be the cause of the falling away. And the falling away will be the cause because of the disregard to the Word of God, His Bible, and disregard to His law of the eternal life, which means deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. These are individuals that follow demonic rule. Knowing or unknowing, they are ruled by demonic influence, whether they know it or they don't know it. And they produce the fruits of lawlessness. Again, the bottom line is this, is they disregard, there's a disregard for the character of Christ. All these individuals have fallen away from the character of Christ or never obtained it from the beginning. Amen? These in, remember, Christ is looking for Christ. In Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 7. Remember, the law was representation of the word of God. Amen? What, whatever God speaks is called law. <laughs> when he speaks, it becomes law. His commands are law. His character is a manifestation of law. Law is an area to where they are released of rules to protect and guide. It's not a control of an individual. It's a guidance. Does everybody get that? Look at verse 7. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect, converting what? The soul, your mind, will, emotions, imaginations, conscience. Converting it, what? Into Christ. Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect. It's the converter of the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are what? Right. Rejoicing the what? The heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eye. So he's telling us we see there's a change of heart. All of this is the converting of the soul. The fear of the Lord is what? Clean, reverence and honor and respect. So if there's a reverence, renown, and respect to the Lord, that means we're, there's not a disregard then. Amen. Amen. Again, it is the opposite. The fear of the Lord is reverence and honor and respect. But the disregard of the Lord is death. 
The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter than also the honey and honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is what? Warned. There is warning going on all over right now. Global warning. And in keeping them, there is great what? Reward. What reward is that? Home. Heaven. <laughs> Heaven. See, we are heaven-bound, eternal. Remember, there's celestial, terrestrial, and extraterrestrial, <laughs> but there's eternal. But that's different, isn't there? We are eternal. And no one else can become eternal except for those who are manifesting the character of Christ. In verse 12, who can, stand, who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Now this is the word. So what God is asking me and you to do is a walk. There should be a walk of innocence. Somebody get it? There should be a walk of what? Innocence. We are innocent of great acts of sin, transgressions. We have a walk of innocence. That means that we don't practice lawlessness. We don't associate with individuals of sin. We are sanctified because sanctification is the prerequisite of salvation. That's what you and I must maintain. That's why all kinds of stuff is going on right now, globally. Again, I can't emphasize enough that there's going to be a lot of surprised people when the restraint has been removed from the earth and they thought they were good people. We must have a walk of what? Innocence. 2 Corinthians 13. Second Corinthians thirteen. In verse one, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says, This will be the third time I am a coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I have told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time. And now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest that if I come again, I will not spare. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves as whether you are of the faith, whether you are connected. Whether you're what? Connected. connected. See, without conviction, there is no connection. See, all the time we are looking for conviction. Amen? And, and it could be the smallest, littlest things. It could be the smallest, littlest thing of sin. And remember, a little leaven leavens the what? The whole lump. Examine yourselves as whether you are of the faith. Test yourselves. Check yourselves out. Do you not know yourselves that Christ is in you unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. 
Uh, but I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong, and this also we pray that you may be complete, or made what? Perfect. Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being pre present, I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Again, he's talking about something very powerful. He says, examine yourselves to see if you are still connected. That's called faith. There's no such thing as blind faith. Because faith, you hear and you do. You have, a, you have a relationship with the Lord. Amen? He is before you. You see him. You know him. There's a reality when he speaks. It penetrates your body. You know. You know. This is what he wants. He wants a relationship with me and you in that area to where we are one. Amen? So we must examine ourselves to see if we are still connected to his presence and we are not a part of the falling away of his character. Now, in this falling away of his character, what does it do? It promotes self and protects selfish desires, emotions, thoughts, and life. These things disqualify an individual from the rapture. Does everybody get that? These things will disqualify an individual from the rapture. And that is the next feast that will be fulfilled, the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. Examine yourselves to see if you are still connected in faith to his presence. Why? Because we do not want to be a part of the falling away of the character of Christ, which still promotes and protects selfishness, self-desires, emotions, thoughts, and life. This will disqualify an individual from the rapture. Is everybody okay? We must have a walk of what? Innocence. A walk of what? Innocence. Genesis 5. Genesis chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Walk of innocence. Things are tightening up these days. A lot of exposure going on. Genesis 5.21. Believe me, if you won't examine yourself, God will. In verse 21, is everybody there? Enoch lived, six, uh, lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. That means he was not about himself. For God did what? Took him. He raptured him. Now this is powerful. Enoch walked with God 300 years. You think he's got something to say? I'd say he's got a lot to say. Then why isn't his books in our Bible because they didn't want you to know what he had to say. Does everybody get this? They did not want you to know what Enoch had to say. He walked with God for 300 years. Why? Because he exposes the whole demonic realm, the fallen angels, and the names and everything that influenced this world. 
they did not want us to know. Is everybody okay? And God did what? Took him. Come on, this is reality. Is there anyone else that walked with God 300 years? No one. No one. I'd say he has something mighty to say. Amen? He was not, because he wasn't about himself. God taught him how to write and read. He taught him everything. Is everybody all right? Listen, we got enough, but we got the Holy Ghost, so we know all things. Amen? In Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11. Now, the Ethiopian canon has the book of Enoch in it. Yes, it has the full books of Enoch in them. But the Roman canon didn't. That's what caused people to still roam. Hebrews 11. Hebrew 11, verse 5. It says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see what? Death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he did what? Please God. So he had a walk of innocence. You understand this is a prerequisite for the rapture. People think they're just going to go home. Well, I'm going home. There's going to be a lot of people disappointed. See, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, by your connection, because that's what faith is. Forever attached into the heavenlies. By faith, he was connected to the presence and the glory of God, and he was raptured. He had a walk of innocence. He was a constant seeker of his righteousness. So there was no lawlessness found in him. There was no unjust, un unrighteousness found in him. He lived a life of innocent. Jude. It's amazing they don't have his books, but they've mentioned him multiple times in the Bible. Verse 14. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam. What does seven mean? Complete and perfect. Prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints. Tens of thousands of his saints. To what? Execute judgment on all. To convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Sounds like the Democratic Party. Do you, but you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how they told you that there would be what? Mockers in the last time, who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not being filled with the Spirit of God. They're a bunch of religious. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in tongues in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Wow. 
And on some have what? Compassion. Making a <laughs> distinction. But others save with what? Fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Wow. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of glory with exceeding joy to, our God, our, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever and ever and ever, that we may walk a life of innocence. Amen? Innocence. These individuals are not filled with the Spirit. They are disconnected from God's presence. They're disconnected from the anointing, the eternal presence and power or truth of God Almighty. Oh, they may know the word and quote the word, but they live a lawless life. Amen? Second Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. Walk of innocence. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ. Christ means what? Anointed. And it means that you are a walking epistle of God's eternal presence, power, and truth. Ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the what? Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. That is of the new heart that you have. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. It means there's a humble state all the time. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the what? Letter. But of the spirit. For the letter what? Kills. Wow. What a bummer to know the word and not obey it. That's how it kills. Because the letter without the anointing is nothing. It's nothing but a religious life. And we are not about being religious. We are offsprings of the Most High. Children. Eternal. People are going to get before the Lord. Well, Lord, I quoted your scripture all the time. Yeah, but you never came to me personally. You never got in my presence. You never even worshipped me. Everything you did was for yourself. Because his throne room says justice and righteousness. That's how you get in. But you must practice it, not know it. Well, I know the word, but did you put it to your life? Amen. So the letter kills. How does it kill? Without the presence. Without the anointing, you can't fulfill the word of God. It's impossible. But the Spirit gives what? Life. The letter kills, the Spirit brings life. We are the epistles. We are the written presence, truth, power of God Almighty called the anointing, as long as we stay connected and filled with His presence. Amen? We are the epistles of the anointing of God Almighty. The eternal presence, power, and truth. This is how we overcome. Amen. Proverbs 6. A walk of innocence. A walk of innocence. Proverbs 6. In verse 16, 
Proverbs 6, 16. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Wow. Those are promoters of abortion. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift and running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among brethren. One who sows what? Discord among brethren. In other words, causes problems all the time. These are things that God hates. These individuals that promote abortion, that promote self, that are protectors of self. They're still not promoting the character of Christ. And I don't care how long a person's been a Christian or proclaims to be a Christian. Remember, nobody gets home without being Christ-like. Amen? God is merciful. Amen? But he gives us plenty of opportunity to turn. Psalm 94. Psalm 94, walk of innocence. That's why the Lord said we should be childlike, not acting as a child, amen? We should be mature, but in the area of child, a child is innocent, amen? Psalm 94, st starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. O Lord God, to whom belongs vengeance, to, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob understand. Understand, you senseless among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He planted the ear, shall it not hear? He formed the eye, shall it not see? He who instructs the nations shall he not correct. He who teaches man knowledge. The Lord knows the thoughts of a man, that they are few. Blessed is what? The man whom the, you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment will return to righteousness, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would have soon settled in silence. If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. They condemn what? Innocent blood. See, this whole psalm is about now. They condemn innocent blood. This is what we're hearing from all of these politicians and all of this stuff that's going on. But the Lord has been my defense and my God, the rock of my refuge. He has brought on them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. The Lord our God shall cut them off. Psalm 106. Again, we are in trying times right now. Remember, we do not judge by race, color, 
language, creed, we judge by what? Fruit. Fruit. What they promote. In verse 32, you know how many people follow what other people follow? So they lie about polls to try to get people to follow the false polls because they're too lazy to seek out the truth themselves. Most people are out looking for a handout. And what we're hearing right now is all of these offerings. Oh, we're going to give you a free education. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. And then they find themselves fall under Sharia law. Yeah. That's what communism is about. That's exactly what happened into Iran. It was a wealthy country, free. People went all over the world to Iran until they imposed Sharia law. Women lost their license, their freedom. They became slaves, abused. At the age of nine, they were commanded to be an adult. A man could take a child at the age of nine. In fact, Mohammed married one that was six years old. You talk about perverse? You talk about a perverse religion? That's under demons, doctrines of demons. They murder their own children because they won't obey them, follow their laws. People are trying to escape left and right from them. And we're finding that invading this country, it's not about the people. It's about their agenda. But thank God, God put a man in office that fears the Lord. <laughs> he fears the Lord. Thank God we got out of eight years of Obama night that promoted evil and wicked and the death of young unborn children. Caused this country to go double in debt. And again, these are individuals that are servants of evil. Amen? But because of the prayers of the saint, God heard the cries of his people. And he put in a man in office that was untraditional. <laughs> Who could not be bought out or bribed. He was primed and prepped multiple years before he came into office. Psalm 106, 32. Is everybody okay? They enraged, they angered the Lord also at the waters of strife so that it went ill with Moses on account of them because they rebelled against his Holy Spirit so that he spoke rash, harshly, rashly with that, his lips. They did not destroy the people's concerning whom the Lord had commanded them. Now, I want you to know, when the Lord was destroying individuals in the Old Testament, it's because they were Nephilim. They were offsprings. Amen? They were the tribes of the fallen angels. But they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their what? Their works. That's how abortion came into play. They served their idols which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. Do you all see this? Is that happening today? Yes. And shed innocent blood, which is unborn child. The blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus, they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own deeds. Wow. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people, his people, so that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand 
of the Gentiles, and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into the subjection under their hand. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their what? Cry. Cry. See, what happens is when people, when the, when the body of Christ did not stand up and fight the way they should have, God put individuals in office to rule over them. And they didn't even know. They were liars and pretenders, but they were servants of darkness. They were mockers of the word of God. Many of them were promoters of demonic uh, religions, doctrines of demons, false religions. Obama was in office for eight years and promoted Islam. He said he was a Christian, but he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. And people who couldn't see that because they were veiled by Lucifer. They couldn't see that. They couldn't see the fruits of wickedness and evil from the moment that man spoke. You could tell it was evil. People couldn't see that. They couldn't understand it. They were veiled. Same thing with Clinton. Oh, he promoted some good things, but he was still a promoter of wickedness. I mean, he got caught in his own office. Come on. You talk, was that good fruit? No. And multiple, multiple, multiple. Now we're, we're seeing many arrests of the promoters of abuse to children. In fact, one major wealthy individual just got arrested. What's his name? Epstein. Epstein. Took him to islands and all kinds of all kinds. He just got busted. There's been thousands of arrests. of smugglers, of children, because what do they do with them? They abuse them and then sacrifice them. And people don't understand that. Nevertheless, the Lord regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, when he, they humbled himself. So God has heard the cry of the body of Christ. And for their sake, he remembered his covenant and relented according to the multitude of their mercies. And he also made them to be pitied by all those who carried them away captive. Save us, O Lord God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say amen. Praise God. Since 1973, this country has allowed innocent bloodshed. Innocent bloodshed. So the fight right now is to turn over, was it Wade, Roe versus Wade, and stop this abortion. Now look at this. Think of how many of these politicians are now promoting that you can just kill a child after it's been born. Think about that. That is sick in paganism. This is what's influencing our younger children. They put professors and teachers in colleges that promote these things. You got an organization called Antifa. The young kids that wear masks and go out and start trouble. They will not allow free speech because they're always interfering. We need to send a couple motorcycle gangs out there that are promoters of America. with their little blessed assurance. <laughs> Psalm 24. <laughs> oh, glory. Psalm 24. We need to be praying for the destruction of these organizations and removal of these individuals from positions in offices that they hold positions to make choices. We need to pray for their exposure of their wicked deeds so that they are arrested and removed. 
quit calling on Jesus. Jesus is calling on you. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in there. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or into his presence? Or whom, who will be raptured? Amen. Or who may stand in his holy place, in his presence, in his glory? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart clean hands and a pure heart, and has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him and seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, which means Lord of the army, commander of the army. Remember, Jesus came as a military operation, not some religious thing. He is God. He came as a military operation to combat all of this innocent bloodshed. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of the army, he is the king of glory. 1 John chapter 2. A walk of innocence. First John chapter 2, verse 12. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy days. In verse 12, let's speak it together, please. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God does what? Abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in it. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And who is the ruler of this earth? Satan in his kingdom. We know the owner, thank God. Verse 17. The world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. What about him who doesn't do the will of God? No. It's toast. Verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Remember, Antichrist is coming against the anointing. They don't mind preaching religion. They don't mind preaching once saved, always saved. They don't mind preaching all of these things. But man, they don't like the anointing. They don't like preaching that Jesus can heal sometimes or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or the gifts of the Spirit. Why? Because they don't want people to have power to overcome. Remember, it's the anointing that overcomes everything. It's the anointing that overcomes the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. We overcome by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb. And we don't live for our lives, we live for His life. And there are many antichrists who have come. They are against 
the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. They play religion when they can't even worship the Lord. Verse 19, it said, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had been of us, they would have what? Continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Why? Because they didn't get connected. Their soul was in a, a level of conversion. They were still attached to the old, the Antichrist, the anti presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. They were bound by the letter that kills, but the Spirit gives life. They were deceived. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. Look at verse 20. But you have a what? You have an anointing. You have the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty, baptized by the Spirit of the living God and staying, maintain connection where you live a innocent life. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. You know it. You know when you're out of order. You know when you're out of time. When you, know, you know when you're convicted. You don't have to ask God anything. You know it. Amen. You know it. But you reason, you justify to prove you're right when we're wrong. That is not promoting the character of Christ. And God's going to deal with these individuals because he's going to convict and that heart's either going to turn pure or stay hardened and be left behind. You know. We know. We know exactly what's going on. We know whether we're acting according to the character of Christ. We know whether we're justifying. We know whether we're lying. We know. Nobody gets away with it. We know. And he knows. Amen? Ephesians chapter 5. And then one more scripture. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. In verse 1, Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. Hello. Be imitators of God as his dear children. And walk in. In love from above, not lust of the earth. As Christ also loved us gave and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetousness man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you by it with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. That's what's happening now. But if we can't expose ourselves, how are we going to expose anything else? People love to expose everyone else, but for themselves, forget it. They'll just justify and reason and lie. Verse 12, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, you are deceived. 
Arise from the dead because you're on your way to the wrong place. And Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are what? Evil, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine or drugs or medications in, in which dispensation, dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And close it. Ephesians 6.10. Submitting to one another in the what? In the fear of God. Submitting to, that means respecting one another. Don't, you know, when people begin to disrespect people in a, because the fear of God's not there. There's no regard for God's presence. Does everybody understand that? I'm telling you, if this is going on in anyone's life, you better search it through good. Very good. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the what? Power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Everybody put their full armor on today? Praise God, even under armor. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take the, up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with what? Truth. Truth. Quit justifying, quit lying, and put, quit compromising. Truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which connects you to the throne of glory, hello, which is able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, back by the anointing, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, which means in tongues. It's the seventh part of the armor. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The full armor. We need to step into that place where we're no longer compromising, justifying, or reasoning. We need to really stand before God and bring a self-examination and be honest about it. And if you're blaming someone, you're already out of order. Amen? God is looking for a walk of innocence. 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 And if we're walking a walk of innocence, we're walking in a humble state and expressing the character of Christ. Amen? We are being prepared to be removed. We are being prepared to be removed. Does everybody understand that? We are in the last days, and the largest harvest is about to happen. So there will be much chaos come. Much chaos. But that's okay. Salvation comes out of much chaos. Amen? And so does the harvest. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Father, that the seed that has been imparted in today that would have protect, covered by the blood, anointed to grow and bear fruit for your glory, that it penetrate every part of our being and bring to remembrance, Lord, guided by the Spirit, so that your name and our conduct will be glorified. 
in your image and likeness and character. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen.